Hello all. So today, again, a lot of questions and again, a reason to start a new playlist. And this time, the playlist will be around emails and business handle. So people, if you have questions, send them along my way somewhere on social media, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, email me. And we'll try to make sure that we keep adding content into this email playlist because there are a lot of questions that people have around it. And maybe most of the questions are coming from people who are coming from NAV because emails were pain in NAV. So in today's video, we'll try to start how you set up emails in Business Central and how for the older folks like me, how it's different from NAV to kind of understand it. So welcome all. So let's begin without wasting any time. So in Business Central, you can actually configure multiple email accounts. Now people who are coming from NAV will be excited to hear it because in NAV, there's only one email account that you can configure per environment or per database. You can send email to your contacts, to your customers, to your vendors. And in general, you can just send an email if you want. You don't have to go through an application, uh, let's say on sales order and then click a button, you can just start using a full-fledged email editor inside Business Central. Uh, there are other cool features which we'll learn as we go along into this journey in this playlist about emailing. So without wasting further time, let's get into our Business Central. So I'm pretty sure that there should be an SSH setup, but let's see, I think there should be. And let's search for it. And I can be completely wrong, but I'm assuming. Okay. Set up outgoing email. Okay. Here it is. That you can set up outgoing emails from Business Central, which opens up a wizard for administrator. You can add email account using these extensions, which are not part of the base app. There's a separate set of extension which enables this functionality of email in Business Central. So just keep in mind, folks who are on-prem, that you need to make sure that your email extensions are also installed when you are implementing slash upgrading customers to Business Central. So in extension management, make sure that these features come from these extensions. So if you don't see what I'm showing in all these videos in this series, and if you're on-prem, just make sure that you have all these extensions installed. And if not, contact your partner to tell them to install these extensions from Microsoft. Okay, coming back to the wizard. Uh, let's hit next and see what's available. So there are following email extension that are available for Business Central by default. The first one is Microsoft 365, which means everyone sends email from a shared mailbox in Exchange Online. Just to take an example, if in your organization you think that we would, we have this shared email group when messages come from the same department, let's say, for example, for your purchase department, you send all your messages from purchases at the rate demo.com account then you can use this option or extension for microsoft 365 to set up a shared mailbox but you as a user will not be able to do it you will require an administrator to do this because as soon as you choose it and do next you need to define other details and permissions on your email exchange so if you are an administrator you know this if you don't let me know I'll research about it and we'll see that. The other one is current user, which is very interesting. Everyone can send email from that account that uses that that they sign in with. So if I set up current user, then the user who is signed in Business Central, his account or her account will be used to send out emails. And last but not least, our favorite, use SMTP. So some people when I was reading some articles, some you know, some forum questions, that SMTP is deprecated. It is not. 
you can still use SMTP protocol to send emails and it'll work as it is. The first two options, Microsoft 365 and current user extension, use the accounts that you set up for users in 365 admin center. To send email using extension, user must have a valid exchange online license. So if you still want to use SMTP, you can enable that. Oh, sorry, you can use that and we'll see how that's used and all. And uh, if you are using SMTP connector extension, you can use the send as or send on behalf capabilities from Microsoft Exchange to change the sender address on outbound messages. It does not mean that you can send it on my thing that will be configured on your server and that's how you'll be able to do it on an exchange base. So let's start setting up some account. So the first account that I'll set up is current user. So as soon as I do current user, it's done and I don't have to do anything else. It says my current user is this and that will be used and then it is set as default. We'll understand what that means. And then there is a rate limit per minute which is where you can specify maximum number of emails per minute that this account can set. A rate of zero indicate that this account cannot set. As in, it's zero means no limit. So it can send any emails. So let's click finish and we'll see it in a while. Let's run the setup again. Yes. And this time, It'll take me to the email account page where you'll already see my current user. As soon as I click on add email account, the wizard will again pop up. And this time, let's use SMTV. And just for demo purposes, what I'll do is I'll apply the Office 365 setting, which will key in my SMTV server port. Authentication type have all the options. If you are still using basic, which you should not be, then that's where it is. If you are using OAuth 2.0, you can use that. NDLM is still available. You should not be using anonymous for sure, but that's still an option. So I can say, as I was saying earlier, that let's suppose we have an ID purge at the rate, or purchase at the rate demo.com is not my account name. Let's say purchase, purchase department email. The third name is purchase demo email address is this and then let's say I have set up my password and all and then I click, click next and then again this time the setup default is set to false and I finish this I haven't verified any of these as an authenticated any of these but I've created two accounts at this point now let's understand what does that setup default means Okay, so if you look at the list, the default account is set up the current user account. There are certain features which are part of Business Central emailing feature where if uh, there is no account has been defined while writing your code while sending an email, it will automatically pick the sender ID as the one which is set as default. So just to give you an example, if there are 20 email accounts that you have set up here and you are trying to send an email where you haven't written the code to select which email account to be used, and we'll see that in future, then it'll automatically take the account which is set as default and you will always have one default email account. So you can change which one is your default account and all, but that's all it takes. Now let's take an example. The beauty is you can do a compose, if I'm not wrong, compose email. What the compose email brings is a full-fledged email editor in the center. And it gives you the from address from where it is going. You are able to change it if needed. Okay. Then whom you are sending it. What is your subject line for your email? And who are your CCs, BCCs? You can define all that in here. You don't actually have to go to Outlook if you have to send an email. Going down, this is the message area where you can type in your message. 
at the same time which comes up with full formatting options that are available in any office application uh, bold italic underline colors uh, bullets numberings indentation hyperlinks uh, superscript subscript images and all those and not just that you also get an attachment area where you can attach files how many files you can attach unlimited the limit that will apply is the exchange limit so like in outlook if you can't send um, if your company doesn't allow you to send attachments uh, more than 25 mb the same limit will apply here but you can attach as number as many files as you want we'll discuss about other options as we go forward into other videos in the series and then you just do a send email so what i'll do is i'll send an email to my personal email account Okay, I'll say hi, and I just did a control B to make it bold. This is a demo email from a central environment. Okay, please find attached files that I wanted to send you. Let's come down and let's do a red file. If I can, let me pick one somewhere, and that should be okay. A picture it should get uploaded here. So, yeah, and then I can just do a send email. Or I can actually go try to go back as you do it in your Outlook and tell you, do you want to keep this in draft in the outbox or you just want to discard the email as you see in any email application? So I'll say, okay, I would like to keep it in my draft in Outlook. So I'll click OK and then I can actually go to my Outbox from here. That'll show me all the emails that has been enqueued here okay that doesn't show me that it should show that okay let me see mm, craft is there something or not it doesn't show me that but that's weird let me go back and see on my own center because there are new queues added on your own center which will tell you about the email so there are four draft emails in our box which i was testing something but then this is the one that I just created. So now I can do this an email. Oh, I didn't have a subject. Okay, let's do a subject. Test email. And let's do this an email. The extension I'm making a request to Excel service. Do you want to allow? Yes. And that should be gone. Now how you can check that, it will come here uh, as the email is sent that how many emails has been sent from last 30 days. While this is happening on my another browser, I'm going to open my Gmail so that I can show you once that email kind of comes in, which haven't came right now. Let's come here and okay, it says here that the email has been sent, the email is test email and it was sent on 3 3 12 17 am and this is the email that was supposed to be gone from business central because i'm waiting for it actually on my personal email id but it should come along i don't think that will be a problem because i have tried and tested it it works fine so with this you can actually send out a normal email if needed and you can set it up as you want so what we learned today let's go through that business central allows you to have emailing option in business central where you can set up multiple email account just remember that first part there should be there will always be one default account which will be used in a case while coding you don't define which email accounts to be used while sending an email 
you can use different extension uh, to configure the email account one is microsoft 365 where you set up a shared email box or you can do a current user as we saw and then you can still do a other as an smtp account as was done in the previous versions um there is a full-fledged email editor within business central which you can use just to send out any generic email not related to business and all you can just send them through that uh, it allows you all formatting option it also allows you to add as many attachments as you want and the limit for number of attachments or size of attachment defined defined at your uh, exchange level so in the next video we'll talk about what other changes from in app or a business central perspective that has been done in the emailing feature of business central one last thing which i forgot if you are on on-prem make sure that you have emailing extension installed on your environment if you are a partner and you are upgrading or implementing a customer make sure that you install these extension so that the customer can utilize the emailing feature in business central hope that makes sense if you have questions drop them in the chat if you like the video do share the video if you haven't subscribed to the channel please do that after this after watching this video and i'll be looking for new questions around this area and we'll be keep adding content into this playlist thank you have a nice day